Crime Broads with Crystal and Renee. Well, hello. Welcome to True Crime Broads. This is Crystal. And Renee. And we are here just with a little quick update today. We hope everyone's doing well. Renee, did you want to get started? Absolutely. Um, so um, we have talk about to just update everybody on um we have some good things coming up but i wanted to um talk about a person um that is missing in the east texas area her name is jamie harper she's been missing since june 17th of 2020 um she's from the I, i'm not really sure how you say this city so correct me if you know crystal but it's i guess it's Harrelton, texas did you, did you say Carrollton with a c no, Harrelton with an Oh, H. I'm sorry. No, I'm not <laughs> familiar with Harrelton. Interesting. Okay, so it's I, I went ahead and pulled up some cities around it just in case people aren't familiar like I'm not familiar. I mean, I kind of knew the vicinity because I have a friend that this person is related to um, uh, by marriage. But, but anyway, um, so I pulled it up, and the, the cities that are closest to it are Diana, Ashland, Nesbitt and Marshall. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Marshall because it's out towards Longview. Yes, yes, that's out in East Texas. Okay, now I've yeah. got the, now I have an idea where you're talking about. Yeah. So she's been missing since June 17th of 2020, and she was seen at someone's house off of, I believe it was County Road 540. And she drives a 2007 white two door Volvo hatchback. She's 36 years old. She is 5'4, 100 pounds, blue eyes, and blonde hair. Um, her uh, missing person's number is 20013138, in case anybody has information about her whereabouts. Um, her um, mom's name is Renee Broadaway. Her father's name is Neil Broadaway. And the Harrison County um, Police Department that is taking calls for her is going to be 903-923-4000. And they literally have no information. They have like a Facebook page group that's uh, finding Jamie Harper. Um, they, that she just, I guess, went to work one day and last was seen at someone's house. That's the last time somebody reported seeing her, you know, somewhere in, in her car. Her car hasn't been found and she hasn't been found. So it's really. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, and she's really been missing for a while now, hasn't she? Because I remember you yeah. told me about this last time. Yeah, this since June. So it's been uh, almost two months that she's been missing and she has children. Mm. She um, is a CNA. Um, so she, you know, she has a job. She's got people that have, you know, been looking for her. She's got children, you know, her family, everybody, friends are just baffled by her disappearance. So I wanted to mention it on here for people that are listening that might be from the area or know someone um, to be on the lookout for her. Um, and I will share a the, the flyer, the poster that they have so that people can see her face. And, and she's, she's got a face that I think that once you, you see her, if you've seen her in public, you would know, you know what I'm saying? Really right. pretty girl. Yeah. And I'll, I'll share it on our Instagram. So please shoot that over to me. Yeah. So I'm I so sorry really to crazy. hear that she's still missing. So there's no inkling. Yeah. You said her family's baffled. So it sounds like they really don't have any idea what happened to her. No, they have absolutely no idea what happened to her. Um, and so they're, you know, they're just reaching out to everybody. I know a lot of her friends and family have been putting up teal, teal bows on like their trees in the front yard or, you know, front mm -hmm. door posts or whatever, um, just in, you know, like a support and everybody to be together. And I think her mom has been um, printing out flyers for people to um, take and put up on different businesses in the area. So a lot of people have been joining forces for that. And um, so they've just been trying to rally together and, you know, come to figure out what has happened to this beautiful mom of, I think she's got two kids. Wow. That's just horrible. I'm so sorry to hear that. We will definitely, definitely spread the word on our social media for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what else are we going to talk about? Well, um, you know, um, I was on Instagram, you know, the last time that we did an episode, we had kindly asked people to um, 
follow us on Instagram because, you know, that just sort of helps us be able to communicate with people. And it's just a kind of a fun little venue for true crime broads and for everyone. Um, so I just was noticing before we got on the air here, remember we were saying a thousand followers was our goal, right? Yeah. And we are three away from a thousand. We're at 997. So we've gotten really close. It's exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. You've done yeah. so good. Oh, thank you. Well, and thank you to everybody who followed us because, um, you know, we sort of pleaded on the last episode and we did notice an increase in followers after that. So thank you so much. That was really, really nice of everyone who followed us since then. It's gone yeah. way up. And we have some other exciting news. You know, we had a listener reach out to us who actually works in public relations in New York city. How about that? So she has been following the Missy Beavers case and she somehow um, got us in touch with the Waxahachie daily light. We actually didn't even talk to them. She um, talked to us and then she arranged for the article and it was about Missy's billboard that we're doing the GoFundMe fundraiser for. So wasn't that exciting, Renee? I was excited to see that in print. Absolutely. I mean, we were, remember how shocked we were when it just came out and we didn't yeah. even know it, it was, it was there. <laughs> that was amazing. That was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I'm, I'm glad she contacted us and was able to do that, you know, because it, it does make a difference and it helps for people to be aware of the case and keep it going like we're, we're, we're hoping for. Right. We would have been way too chicken to have asked the walks to had you daily light ourselves. So <laughs> we're really happy that she arranged that for us. That was really, really nice of her. And um, kind of on a similar note, we have an exciting podcast coming up next. We're really trying hard to bring, you know, some good content to you guys. Um, trying to make these episodes, not just the two of us babbling for an hour, but cause especially when there's no updates in the case. So um, we've got a special guest coming up. We have, um, two guys actually they're partners one of them was a, an NYPD homicide detective um in the past and now he is a private investigator so he's going to come on the program with his partner and answer some questions so if our listeners have any questions that you'd like to submit please do and um we're already getting our questions organized for him and we're looking forward to that episode. I think we'll be recording it within the week. So chances are that will be our very next podcast. Yeah, that's going to be really exciting because, um, you know, we, we always have so many questions for, you know, um, all the different, um, you know, police and uh, uh, all the different people that play a role in murder investigations. I mean, there's so many different ones and an investigator, actual investigator is, is one of the ones that we've always been like, you know, how do they do this or that? And so I'm really excited about being able to ask some specific questions that we've always wondered. And, you know, now we can actually have those questions answered. So that's going to be really, really good. Really yeah, I helpful. cannot, cannot wait. That's going to be huge. And um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And we mm -hmm. hope that our listeners enjoy it. And we really want to, we really want to keep people entertained so they'll stick around and, you know, we want to draw people into the podcast. We don't want you to be bored. We want to keep you entertained and, we're hoping that just the right people too will listen to it sometime and maybe call in the tip that gets this perpetrator caught. You just never know who's out there listening. Somebody knows something and we just have to figure out who it is and hopefully the right person will, will come forward. We're waiting on that here past four years now. Oh my gosh, for real. It's been a long, long, hard road. And I, I hope that something comes up soon. For sure. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Um, was there anything else that we wanted to cover? We just were doing a really quick announcement type podcast tonight, not an entire episode. Um, yeah, I wanted to update on the the billboard GoFundMe. Um, so we have uh, we are up to eight forty five. In the article that they just did a few days ago, they said seven fifteen, and so we're up to eight forty five. The the uh, ones that we've recently received is um, a, a donation from Brandon E, Daryl B, Trevor S. And another anonymous donation. So we've uh, increased it by $110. So we're super thankful for that. And uh, we just want to tell everybody, thank you for donating to the billboard. We still have a little ways to go. We still need another, uh, let's see, eleven fifty-five to get to reach our goal. So um, keep sharing the uh, GoFundMe and we'll put that back up on our page again so you can find it easily. 
share it, you know, on your page, maybe on the, on your story on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whichever social media you use the most. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter how much you, you, you help out with no day donation is too small. So we really appreciate that. Right, right. And we should probably tweet that on Twitter. You know, I forget about Twitter sometimes just because I have not used it a whole lot in my life, but we should probably tweet that and that way people can retweet it easily. And if you could share our post about it on Instagram or Facebook, we would just greatly appreciate it. We're trying to spread the word and get this project wrapped up of raising the money. Um, you know, no amount is too small, five, 10, $15, the $20. We have, we have quite a few. I would say that was probably our our most popular amount that people donate is $20 and those really add up fast, you know? So we're really, really grateful and thank you to everybody who has donated. So, um, was that it for tonight or did we have something else? I don't want to forget anything. Um, No, I was just going to remind people about the, um, crime stoppers for Ellis County. So, um, crime stoppers of Ellis County is, um, a place where people can turn in tips Um, and so one of the things that I learned recently was they have the, a P3 app and it's an app that you can download on your phone and you can use it to turn in tips for crimes and they pay an actual separate reward. If you turn in a tip that ends up resulting in someone being um, arrested or a a crime being solved of some sort. And Mm. so you download the app and then you go on there and you, um, you know, put in the information. You don't have to put in your information, but the information about the crime that you're, you know, reporting on. And then it gives you like a code and then um, they communicate, I guess they basically communicate with you back and forth through the code. Maybe it's like an email thing or something. I'm, I, I really haven't ever obviously used it. So it's hard for me to explain it, but this is the way I understood it, but they have no way to know who you are. It can be completely anonymous. And then if your a tip ends up, helping to solve a crime, then they will pay up to a thousand dollars. So that's pretty neat. That is awesome. I remember you telling me about that app the other day and about how it scrambles your information and they can't, they just absolutely cannot trace it back to you no matter how hard they try. Yeah. They, she said they don't even want to, you know, they don't want to do that. They just want to, um, you know, get the information to get these tips coming in so they can get these crimes solved. Cause that's tip. I mean, that happens so often people, you know, calling a tip and, and that's what we're hoping in Missy Beaver's case. Somebody will call in a, the tip that solves the crime. How would somebody claim the reward money if they did it on that anonymous app? It, she explained it to me like this. So they, they go on, they download the P3 app and then they, um, go on there to say they want to turn in a tip and then it'll ask information like, um, I think it just asks, it, it, I'm trying to understand how it works and I want to say it correctly, but you, you basically put a code in or, or you put in the information and it gives you a code and then um, you're directed to put that code back in. And w- once you know the code, then that's the only way you can get the reward money. I don't, does that make cool. sense? Cool. Yeah, that does. That does. Right. <laughs> no, kind of confusing, cool. like I said, when you haven't done it before, but you know, you know, in the code is the only way to get the reward money. So very cool. Yeah. That's um, awesome. I heard your doggies are up late. <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't take anything for them to bark. You know, they, they, a leaf can fly by and they're just like, oh, let me bark like crazy over nothing. Right. Well, I'm glad you're not in your garage studio since it was like, what was it, like 102, 103 today? Oh my it was gosh. crazy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so miserable. Goodness. Yeah. Really hot in Texas, y'all. I don't know where you're yeah. listening from. I'm sure it's hot I a lot of places. It's August. This is- this is the time of year when I'm like looking forward to October. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cool. Crossing the days off the calendar. No kidding. Um, yeah, oh, Hey, one more thing I wanted to mention before we depart is that uh-huh. today is the six month anniversary of true crime broads. We did our first episode six months ago tonight, which was February 15th. This is Saturday, August 15th. So we thought that would be a good time to do a, a quick update. And just sort of commemorate the first six months. It's been a pretty wild ride and we've enjoyed every minute of it. So thank you very much to our listeners. And I think, do you have anything else, Renee, before we sign off? I was just going to tell you something funny. I, the other day I was talking to somebody called me about a, um, about insurance or car insurance or something. You know, they're always trying to get a change or insurance or whatever. And, um, somebody called me and said, you know, who, who are you, um, who do you have your currently have your car insurance with? 
and I said anchor. <laughs> that's funny. I remember you telling me that. I was like, um, I'm sorry, that's not who I ventured with. I don't know where that came from. It was hilarious. But um, I was going to tell you something really quick while I was telling you that story. Oh, so I'm trying to see how many episodes we have. Are we on? We're on season two is what we called it because we did 15 the first time. And then for the second ones, I think we're at 28, 14, 20. We're almost, I think this one, the, the next one we do will be episode 30. Wow. Yeah. We've been working, y'all. Yeah, so that'll be cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy that the podcast has gotten as many listens as it has. We have enough of an audience to definitely make this worthwhile and to keep moving forward. So we're going to continue on hopefully for at least another six months. I tell you what, I was going to say, hopefully we'll stop because this murder gets solved, but no way we're going to keep going even after an arrest because there's going to be a lot to cover after the arrest and hopefully a trial or will there be a plea deal? We'll just have to, we'll just have to stay tuned and see what happens here in the Missy Beavers case. But I sure hope, sure hope we find out soon. Oh my gosh, that is, you know, just, just thinking about that just gets me excited because, you know, just the, it's just so sad that this thing has gone on for four years and just, you know, and I can, can you imagine the people that have to go through things like this, similar to this, but for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, can you imagine? Mm -mm. Oh. No, especially if it's your own loved one. I mean, this is hard enough on us, but imagine if it was a really, really close family member. I mean, it's just. It's just really gut wrenching. I think about Missy's family all the time. So mm -hmm. uh, let's just all hope and pray and continue to press on and hope this thing changes at some point. I'm, I'm really hoping all this silence from MPD means something. A lot yeah, of people say it, it means they're lost. And some people are saying, hey, they think that something's cooking. So hopefully we'll yeah. find out soon. We have no idea. Uh, absolutely. You know, and, and another thing I wanted to tell everybody um, that's listening, you know, be sure and, um, you know, if you're in our group or if you're in our um, on our page, our True Crime Broads page, um, share that with other people because it lets people know that we're there and that we're covering the case. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and then, you know, the more people that we have in the discussion group and, and we talk about the case together, it just brings on more insight, more people become aware of it. And we just want this thing to be spread far and wide so that, you know, because like I said, the more people that know about it, the more likely we are to have people either call in tips or tell something that they know. Cause you know, sometimes people just don't think it's relevant. And then, and then they think, well, you know, let me go ahead and tell. And that might be the tip that solves the case. So share our social media with other people. It really does help. Yes. We would greatly appreciate that. And on that same note, I was going to also say, you know, if you want to support us, we don't have sponsors or, we don't have anything set up for donations or anything like that. So we're not asking for monetary support at all, but we would definitely really appreciate it. If you would go to either iTunes or Apple podcasts, whichever is easiest for you and drop us a five-star review. If you're enjoying the podcast, if um, you don't like the podcast, just never mind. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for good reviews only, please, please. Um, but if you are enjoying, if, if you're actually enjoying the podcast, genuinely enjoying it, we would love to hear from you. Uh, a review would really help bump us up and get us some more listeners and some more awareness for Missy's case. So we would really, really appreciate that. Yeah, we really enjoy it whenever um, our listeners also, you know, kind of communicate with us and tell us what they think or give us ideas. And we do read each and every one of those. So we appreciate all that input. We really, really do. So thank you. A lot of weirdness on Instagram. My goodness. I just saw another weirdo pop up on ours. I had to block. <laughs> I'll tell you about it later. Not for prime yeah, we, time we listeners. On Facebook too. Goodness. Yeah. So it's like it's um, not as bad on Twitter. I don't really, I really don't ever see anything, anyone I ever have to block on there. It's weird. Yeah, this one was just super inappropriate, but anyway, <laughs> they're gone. But um, okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to True Crime Brides. This was just a little quickie update. It's a uh, we're at 19 minutes now that we've been on the air, so I guess we're going to sign off, and we can't wait to see you next time when we yep. will bring you our special guests. Yep, sounds good. Thanks okay. all for listening. Thank you. Bye bye.
with the gas. Money net status in my crew. Everywhere we go, we dripping like we fools. Everywhere we go, we dripping till we cool. Dripping in the summer shade, people do not know shade. Margella on my shoes. Mason Margella, and I walk around like shoe. Yes. Yeah.